Hi, um, I'm Leonardo Collado Torres, an investigator at the Libre Institute for Brain Development. And so I've seen a lot of people recently making heat maps or learning how to make heat maps. And I, we've had to explain a few different times um, why you want to center and scale your heat maps. So this uh, website I uploaded by default has that, um, and it's an IC interactive website. IC is I-S-E-E. -E. Um, and so if we can see, if we click here on the visual parameters, I'm going to, um, uh, under transform, I'm going to undo the centering and scaling. And so this is how a lot of heat maps that I've seen recently look like, where they have, um, in this case, the log counts showing from zero to 15. And while you can definitely see which genes are more highly expressed than others, for example, here SNAP25 is highly expressed in all of these samples, uh, which is something we expect because we're looking at brain data and SNAP25 is express, expressing a lot of those neurons. Um, um, while that is interesting and you can compare different genes right now, within a particular gene, you can't really see differences across, for example, here we have a variable called base space, which identifies like different clusters that we wanna look at. And so um, I'll transform first by, um, let me put the default color scale. Um, um, that's the default color scale over here. So I'm gonna um, first transform by centering. So the centering means for every row, in which in this case is every gene, we remove the mean. So now um, every row here, the center will be the black color. Um, and you can change here in IC the color scale. So I'm gonna uh, change it to blue, white, orange, uh, but like a very traditional color scale is the blue, white to red, which means low values are blue, uh, white is the middle value, which is zero, and then red is the high value. Um, there's a few different color scales. Uh, choose whichever you want. Um, uh, so I'll use blue to orange because, I, um, um, yeah, anyways. Um, so you see here you can see that after centering, um, now we can um, kind of see a bit more differences between clusters. So uh, for example, Relen, this gene over here is uh, more highly expressed. So that means it's in orange compared to the mean of that of the expression of that gene um, on these um, um, uh, um, pink or salmon color cluster. But then we scale, uh, that actually means now for every row we're dividing by the, the standard deviation of the expression um, in that particular row. Now we get by centering and scaling, we're actually computing Z scores. Um, and so now we can more visibly, easily see visually the difference between clusters where like Rillen is more highly expressed um, again in that salmon cluster. But now we see also, for example, AQP4 is more highly expressed in that one. Um, and for example, something we couldn't see earlier was that SNAP25 is not as expressed. So it's actually blue here on that purple, uh, on that uh, blue cluster. Um, so these are um, why visually when you make a heat map, you uh, typically want to center and scale if you want to see that um, in a particular gene, it's more highly expressed for a particular cluster. Um, and you wanna see that pattern across different genes that have uh, basically different means of expression. Um, otherwise, if you don't do that, you uh, uh, won't notice it as we can see is the case uh, here, right? It'll be harder to see. All right, that's all for today. See you around. Bye.